Hello, this is Noreen Crone Findlay, and I am going to make a separate video for weaving the body and legs of the panda bear for the saffron bear, which is part of the summer weaving challenge. And the panda bear, the reason why I'm doing a separate um, video for the panda bear body and legs is because the panda bear has a unique situation with its body and legs. So let's get going with that then. I imprinted on panda bears when I was very, very little. Now this one is not mine. This very old and rather in need of some repair work panda was my husband's, but mine vanished in my who knows when and where. But since then, because I do love pandas so much, I, as a wood carver, love carving pandas. And I wanted to just show you a few of them just to um, make the point that um, a panda bear still reads as a panda bear, even if it has um, different things that have been added as design elements. Now, making clothes for panda bears, why not? This particular panda bear still completely reads as a panda bear, but she has schmancy shoes, leggings, um, a unitard, little body stocking. Um, and sure enough, she is still clearly a panda bear. This one also has little shoes and a necklace and a heart. I like to put hearts on them. And this uh, panda is more clearly, um, you know, just plain panda. But what we're going to be doing is uh, interpreting the panda bear um, as a woven version of the panda bear. Now, the thing that makes the panda bear different from our prototype bear is, of course, the two colored body. So that's why I'm doing a separate video for weaving the body and legs of the panda bear during the saffron, uh, the summer weaving uh, challenge. Okay. I'll just clear, I'll move these little friends off to the side and we can get started. The loom is set up to the to being six inches from or 15 centimeters from the upper edge to the lower edge of the of the pegs. The, um, the arms of the panda are, I've already woven those, they are two and a half inches long. All of the arms for all of the bears um, that I'm doing for the weaving challenge are all two and a half inches long. Now, because most of the panda bear body and legs is black, I'm going to be warping my loom with um, here, just need to disentangle. I've got the yarn is kind of all over the place here. Um, I'm going to be weaving with two strands. The, the warp is two strands of yarn held together. And this is quite bulky yarn, which I really like because you get a very nice, closed, dense fabric. And if your yarn is not really dense, then you need to add more um, strands of yarn to it. And I just need to adjust my camera placement here ever so slightly. The uh, camera has a tendency to travel a bit. Speaking of traveling, we're going to be working with the um, traveling strand um, side uh, which that technique is covered in innovative weaving on the frame loom. And so we're going to start by leaving a tail that is probably, that's about nine inches long at least. And I'm going to fold the yarn over. I just pulled that up. Okay. And I 
have folded it into a loop. I'm going to fold it over again, reach through, pull up, and then pull out a loop that is, this is your making a slip knot. And so the, the loop of the slip knot has to be long enough to reach from the top to the bottom of the loom. By the way, um, there is a video that is the that explains to you all the stuff you need to be weaving the um, the bears for the summer weaving challenge, and so you can check that. Uh, go to my toddytalkscrafts.com blog, and um, the information with all the links for all the videos is there. So. We've got the, um, the, the loop is here. We're going to move over one slot, take it up to the next empty slot, down, and to the next empty slot, and up. So you're going slot to slot across the loom. You're going to want to have a total of 20 sets of warp strands on your loom for weaving the bear. Now, I'm holding two strands of yarn together as the warp strands and but I'm going to be calling them the warp strands so they will be treated as if they are only one set of strand like only one strand but you'll be going over and under the the two sets of strands as you weave so the um the teddy bear is warped for 21, not 21, 20 uh, warp strands across. So you have uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20 strands. Now you cut the, uh, cut the um, strand. I have been pulling the yarn from the inside and the outside of the ball and I'm going to snip off the end uh, that comes from the outside of the ball and I'm going to take it I want to lock it in place so I'm going to take it around to the back of the loom and over and then I'll just tie a half of a knot here with the um, um, the yarn from the the ball and then I'll just take that into the back and I'll just wrap it around that's the uh, the, the the connector piece for the sandy stand the next stage is to weave in a shed stick. Now the shed stick goes under, over, under, over, across, and you're going under two, over two strands across the loom. We're going to use the traveling strand of yarn um, to uh, lock the loops up the right hand side of the weaving. The body of the bear, when it's woven, here's the prototype um, bear. Um, you'll see that there's two inches of body and four inches of leg. And the legs are, the body is woven all the way across. The legs are woven um, half the strands at a time. So we'll start with taking the, running the weaving hook through the open shed that's created by having the shed stick in the weaving. And you're going to fold the yarn from the, from the um, ball through and bring it in and, oops, my hook popped out of the loop. That's okay, doesn't matter. And then catch the traveling strands and bring them through. Now, before I tighten up, I will use the fork to push down on my 
uh, on my weaving and now I'm going to pull back on the weft strands just to bring the edge the loop to the edge and close that again now I go under I go over the strands I went under and under the strands I went over and so these two rows are what you're going to repeat for one inch of weaving which will be the shoulder section of the pound de bear so again I fold my yarn to make a loop put that loop on the end of the hook draw it through the weaving and I'm going to catch that traveling loop pull it up and ease it into place and push down and that's the first two rows so I will repeat those two rows for one inch and grab that strand pull it to the edge and I'm weaving tabby weave for the shoulder section and notice that I am like most weaving is Um, is taken through the weft is taken through the warp with that arch shape to make sure that you don't pull your edges in to uh, turn it into um, uh, an hourglass and you know that works fine when you're doing shaped weaving there are pieces in the innovative weaving on the frame loom book that are our you know that are shaped by pulling in but this is not one of them now this teddy bear um, is not in the book um, I had intended to include teddy bears in the book but um, I ran out of my allotted number of pages and so this is a bonus I'd better measure this up and see that's starting to look like it's an inch of weaving or 2.5 centimeters just beat that into place now beating into place is not like beat 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 um, no it's just uh, nudging it into place okay let's measure and yeah that's actually a generous inch now we're going to switch to the panda bears bottom half of the body and so what we'll do is for this section of the weaving I'm going to move the traveling st strands up to the top of the loom and the weft from the ball up to the top of the loom and I uh, I have cut um, a length of yarn that's about two feet long 72 inches um, which is um, not quite two meters and so I'm just going to thread that into a weaving needle and so with the weaving needle I'm going to um, follow the same uh, weaving plan as I did before which means that I'm uh, actually starting on row two here and I am weaving with um, just will be leaving behind the weft strands will be just one strand at a time of the um, of the white yarn and the reason for that is that because I'm working with quite a bulky yarn what happens with the bulky yarn is it will make a gorgeous checkerboard um, pattern which I didn't want because um, what I want now is to have weft face 
weaving. And so I need to have the um, weft strands completely cover the warp strands. And to do that, I had to switch my weaving plan to doing one strand at a time because it packs down more easily. You just can't get, when you hold the two strands together, you just can't get it to pack in uh, and cover the warp strands um, the way we need for this next inch of weaving. And so I start packing them in at the the opposite edge that it come that uh, the far edge of the weaving and I'm going to just do a sneaky little bit of a no-no here and just tie those in place so I will continue whoops this side is sitting a bit higher on the loom I'll keep packing that in and I'm including the traveling strand uh, in the weaving just so it's covered up as well. And I want it to be moved up um, to the, um, to the, uh, to the upper leg there. I mean, to the hip level. And so I'm just drawing this through and I'm going to pull that up a bit. And so I am just repeating the same, it's the same weaving path as I did with the, um, with the weaving hook, but using a weaving needle with just one strand that's not folded in half. And you can see I'm starting to cover up my, um, and cover up my uh, my warp strands quite nicely because you want the white to cover the black for this inch of body and so that's why I am doing it this way So I want this angled up so that I can beat it in. Beat, beat, beat. Wait a minute. Did I? I did. I need to go and correct that because I did two rows the same. Ha! Huh. Because I was like, wait a minute, what have I done here? Okay, so I'm going to pull, I'm going to stop pull this out and weave this one correctly and then I'll be right back to you. I always think it's good when I make a mistake uh, when I'm videoing because it then gives um, everyone a chance to go, oh, okay, let's, you know, I, what if I make a mistake? How do I fix it? And if, if I'm making the mistake for you, then it's like, oh, okay. So, now, I have pulled out that wrong row of weaving, and I am <laughs> correcting myself here. So, okay, I've woven the row correctly, one can hope. We live in hope. So, alternating the rows one and two of the weaving. And just a minute, that traveling strand is uh, not behaving itself quite as nicely as I would like it to. Okay, so now let's beat that in and make sure that I have gotten that right. And that be just the pits to have gotten it wrong. There, that's better. Oh, phew, yay. It's so nice to get it right. Okay, and then I'm going to go under the teddy bear. You need to move out of the way here. Uh, I'm going to move under the 
this guy can just go under there for now just to stay out of the way a little bit and just I have a friend who always said I will carry on as if I'm in my right mind and so that's what I'm going to do is just carry on as if I'm in my right mind and the um, the shed stick makes it so easy to weave half the rows are pre-woven for you because you have your shed stick in there and there yes the the white is covering the covering the warp strands yay which is what we want okay so ah <gasps> yay thank goodness okay so I am going to blithely weave on here. I want an inch of the white weaving to cover up the black warp strands to give me the panda bear tummy and bottom. And so what I will do is, because it's kind of, it's a bit slower than the... Um, then the tabby weave because I'm checking to make sure the whole time that I am <laughs> doing it right and covering my warp strands. And so we just keep pushing it in so that it is moving down. And with weft face weaving like this, that is actually a how tapestries are woven of course okay that guy is just you know I'm gonna pull that in a little bit because that one is just a bit too bulgy at the side there okay so I am going to carry on weaving the white part of the body I am still getting a little uh, you can still see some black, but c'est la vie. It's not rocket science or brain surgery. It's a panda bear. So I'm going to stop, finish weaving this inch of the lower body, because remember, I'm weaving from the shoulders up to the hips, and then we'll do the legs. So I will weave the white up to uh, the two inch mark, and that will be the hip line. And I'll come back at that point. There, I have now woven an inch of, or 2.5 centimeters of white. And it's interesting, but the, um, I find the camera sees more of the, sees more loom lice, sees more warp strands showing than the human eye does. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so now that this is the body, shoulders, um, tummy and bottom, hip line here. So I'm going to now weave the first leg and leave the second leg on its own just for now. And so I'm going to take the shed strand, <laughs> shed stick out of these 10 strands. So one, two, three, four, five pegs. And so if you find it easier to put a clip or tie off the, um, the warp strands so that you're not catching them, um, little clips like this are useful and they can help separate things for you if you just want or you can use a shoelace and tie them over but what I'm going to do now is switch to chaining rather than using I don't have a traveling strand here so I'm going to chain this leg um, or weave this leg with a chained edge finish which again is a technique that's in the um, in innovative weaving on the frame loom. So now I finished my last row using the shed stick. So this next row I will work 
the opposite set of stitches from the previous one. And I'm back to folding my black yarn. It has traveled nicely up the inside of that channel of weaving. I'm not going to take my loop off my hook and park it. I will simply hold the loop onto my hook and I will go back into the I'll pull the shed stick down so it's a bit easier. And I'm going to push down on the previous row, fold a loop over my finger, ease it through, and ease it through the loop that's on the uh, weaving hook, crochet hook, um, and then ease back. And ease is definitely the term that we want to pay attention to because we don't want to pull in on the legs and hourglass them in. And so I just keep repeating those two rows, weaving over the ones that I wove under, under the strands I wove over, and bring it through the weaving, ease my loop so that the hook is right against the woven edge and push that weaving down and I will carry on up to the top of the loom and get back to you when this leg is all woven and then we'll weave the second leg. So I will be back in the blink of an eye. I've woven up to the top of the loom so the first leg is done and I need to, oops, I just popped the loops off the loom. I don't want to do that quite yet. So I'll pop those back on. Um, what I need to do, <laughs> got that stuck now, is for the last row I am switching to a smaller crochet hook. Um, this one was like a 4 or 4.5 millimeter um, hook and this one I am moving down to a 3 millimeter crochet hook. And I'm going to weave the last row it's pretty close to the top, but I, I want to squeak in as much um, weaving as I can on the leg to make a nice dense finish. So I'm pulling this last leg through, this last, last row of the leg through, and ease back. Now I'm going to slip the hook out of the loop and pick the loop up from the crochet hook and put it on a safety pin just to hold it. And I'm going to give myself some extra yarn for sewing up and I will snip that off. And now I'm going to move over so I can start the second leg take that clip off and I'm going to have a tail end that will be at the center of the body and that's okay because that helps with um, uh, stitching the body together. Now again I'm going to go and put my shed stick back into these 10 sets of warp strands and I will go back to using, I've got my traveling strands there, so I might as well use them. So I keep the flow of the pattern by going under and over and then pick up the traveling strands, ease it in, nudge it down, this fork is a thrift shop find. Um, I bought it because it's got uh, a fairly big uh, head on it and um, cheap and cheerful and it works great. So it lives with my weaving stuff and not in the 
in the drawer. Okay, and through and um, wait a minute, pick up my strands, ease back, checking how I'm doing at both edges, beat into place, and I will carry on weaving the second leg from the hip to the toes and come back to you when the second leg is woven. So I have finished weaving the second leg now and I've taken the uh, last loop through the, uh, I've taken the traveling strand through that last loop off the hook and I have snipped an, the weft end so the weaving is ready to come off the loom. I will um, show you how to uh, do the assembly of the um, of the teddy bear bodies in a separate video because I'll uh, show several different bodies and how they are woven and uh, rather than repeating that uh, over and over in um, multiple <laughs> multiple videos so uh, go to tottytalkscraft.com and uh, it, the, all the links are in uh, a, a post on my blog uh, for, and it says all the links for the Summer Weaving Challenge 2022. So you'll be able to see all the things that you need to know for making the Saffron Summer Teddy Bear. Happy weaving. And um, you'll also need to look up how to weave the head, how to weave the nose, and the video on making the, um, making the ears and adding the nose and all the features. So, more videos to watch. <laughs>